They're saying plastics are bad, we need to replace plastics. But when you check the science, science says the exact opposite. If there are 30 studies on bags and they all say plastic bags are greenest, and they're independent studies, then we should go with plastic bags. Banning or taxing the greenest solution is just stupid. Companies are going to get busted for lying to us to make profits. Whoppers, they're telling us are. They're telling us things which are just scientifically disproven again and again and again. So that's where it's coming from. It's being driven by people who are greedy for our donations. Hello and welcome to Palmer Update. Today we are diving into a topic that has sparked significant debate across the globe. The use of plastics and the growing movement towards banning them. Joining us is a distinguished guest who brings a compelling perspective to this conversation. Dr. Chris D. Ahmed. Dr. D. Ahmed is a renowned scientist and an outspoken advocate for the benefits of plastics, challenging the widespread calls for plastic bans. With an impressive background in material science and a passion for debunking myths, he offers a unique and thought-provoking viewpoint on why plastics may not be the environmental villain they are often portrayed to be. Welcome to Palmer Update, Dr. Chris. Thank you so much for speaking to us. Nice to meet you too. Thanks for inviting me. So my first question to you is, given your expertise in plastics, what do you see as the biggest challenges facing the industry today, especially in terms of balancing innovation with an environmental responsibility? Yeah. Actually, my first book was on innovation because I am a, an innovator. So uh, that's something I have a lot of expertise in. Uh, what I see now is um, there is a lot of innovation to do with the cost reduction and so forth. And that usually makes things greener. So, for example, most regular people don't know that a PET bottle uses half the plastic that it used to use. And it's the same with many other types of packaging that uh, they're continually using less and less material, improving the materials and making them greener. So there is a lot of innovation. But I also see problems where a huge amount of innovation is coming from things which are actually increasing harm. So um, they're making things that degrade. They're making new bioplastics, which are actually worse for the environment. People are moving to paper and metal and glass, which are all proven to be much worse for the environment. So that's a problem I see. Um, the customers want alternatives. And then the innovation comes to deliver alternatives. But usually these alternatives are scientifically proven to be much worse for the environment and much more expensive as well. So that's a problem because innovation spent on things which are worse is, is bad for the environment, right? Think of how many billions of dollars are spent innovating all the time in the lab, all the chemicals used, all of these things to create stuff that turns out to be worse for the environment than what you started with. So I think there is a balance to go on there and we need to do a better job of it. Well, absolutely right, Dr. Chris. But how do you respond to the increasing concerns about plastic waste and environmental sustainability? And what role do you see for biodegradable plastics in reducing environmental impact? Yeah, I'm not a big fan of uh, degradables. Basically, you're trying to make something litter friendly, mm -hmm. right? You're trying to make it like Harry Potter. I drop it on the floor, which you shouldn't do, and then it vanishes by itself. Yeah. So if you look at the degradation of plastics, Groups are claiming that they take hundreds or even thousands of years to degrade. And it's just not true. If you check the science, a regular polyethylene bag that you get from the grocery store disintegrates into pieces and vanishes in less than one year. It takes about nine months outdoors, just on the ground for it to disappear and vanish and degrade. So green groups are telling us that plastics don't degrade when scientists have 50 years of data and hundreds and hundreds of articles showing that they do degrade. In fact, they have to put in additives, especially to stop them from degrading. So that's what I see in general. I don't see degradables are a way of covering up bad behavior. And also think about it. Degradation means converting solids into carbon dioxide, which is exactly the opposite of what most people want. So that doesn't make any sense either. So I think um, people are going in the wrong direction because they're making decisions based on misinformation. They're saying plastics are bad. We need to replace plastics. But when you check the science, science says the exact opposite. So we have to be careful. We have to start with things that are true and then make sensible choices after we've seen the evidence. That's an insightful point, Dr. Chris. So in your book, The Plastics Paradox, you challenge common perceptions about plastics. Can you summarize some key points and misconceptions you address and explain the most damaging misconception about plastics? So um, this is the book. And yeah. some people assume that I wrote the book to make money, right? The, the book is free in five languages. You can download it in five languages um, because I care about facts. And probably the biggest misconceptions are um, plastic is 
they say plastic, we're drowning in plastic, right? If you check plastic use, it's about one half of a percent of all the materials we use. So if people were worried that we're using too many materials, and we are, we're using too many materials. But if you're really worried about that, you wouldn't really be focused on half a percent of our materials and ignore the other 99 and a half. And that's what we're doing right now. In general, plastics create an impact just like everything does, but we're obsessing over plastics and ignoring more than 99% of our problem. And that's leading to issues, right? I mean, I made an analogy the other day. I give keynote talks on plastics and the environment, and I gave an analogy. Imagine you wanted to clean your house and you go home, instead of cleaning the whole house, you decide, I'm just going to clean the cutlery drawer. I'm going to polish the knives and the forks. I'm going to move everything around, make it all nice and clean. And then I'm just, I'm only going to clean that. I'm going to clean the cutlery drawer obsessively every day and hope that the rest of the house cleans itself. And that would, of course, be insane and it wouldn't work. And that's what we're doing right now. We're obsessing over plastic and ignoring 99.5% of materials and impact. So that's, that's basically dooming us to failure. It's a lot of fun to talk about plastics all day and obsess over one thing, but really we're not ma making any difference because uh, we're we're ignoring the vast majority of the problem. Dr. Chris, how do you foresee the role of traditional plastics evolving in the next decade and uh, what trends do you predict will dominate the industry? I think one trend we're going to see is people being busted for greenwashing because so many of these uh, products that were being handed were being told to buy paper where 40 life cycle studies show that it increases harm. We're being told to buy metal straws, which are much for, worse for the environment. We're being told to buy metal cans and things which are scientifically proven to increase harm. And even in the plastics industry, I see a lot of people coming out with uh, bioplastics, degradable plastics, and most of those things are more expensive and increase harm. So I think we're going to see a big backlash where companies are going to get busted for lying to us to make profits. And people are going to end up going back to normal plastics because if you look at the price, and the life cycle studies, the greenest plastics are polyethylene, polypropylene, PET, and even P PVC, and even polystyrene foam, which uh, I just saw some life cycle studies that polystyrene foam is surprisingly green because it's 98% air, right? There's hardly any material there. So people are going to end up going to the same materials that we always used. And I think the trend will be maybe more honesty, more reliance on facts, more really looking at the carbon footprint, really not just making marketing claims, but really looking at the scientific data where plastics shine. They absolutely obliterate other materials in most applications. And I think the other trend you'll see is making more of these plastics from um, plant-based bio uh, feedstocks because people think that plastics can only be made from fossil fuels and that's not true you can buy polyethylene and polypropylene right now made from plants instead so it's the exact same plastic it's a drop-in solution and it's not made from fossil fuels and the public 99 percent of the public have no idea that those have been on the market for years already well you are absolutely right so you have critiqued some environmental claims about plastics how do you approach balancing environmental concerns with the practical benefits of plastics and what significant breakthroughs in plastic recycling or waste management do you anticipate in the near future? Well, when it comes to waste, you mentioned waste management. That is a key point because at the moment, people in the West are being told that they're bad people because all of this plastic is in the ocean. And if you look at the waste mismanagement, it's not happening in the richer company countries. So they do generate more waste. They have more money and they generate more waste. But if you look at waste mismanagement, it's not coming from Europe. It's not coming from America. It's coming from mainly Africa and uh, some other some other countries. So um, and so why are the green groups telling people in America and people in Europe that they're bad people and that they need to donate now? Right. There's an emergency. And the reason they're doing that is because these people in the poorer countries that haven't caught up yet, who are mismanaging their waste, they don't have any money. So the environmental groups can't go and get their money and ask for donations because those people don't have money. So that's why they're asking people in the West, give me your money, give me your money, you're a bad person. But the science says, no, that waste is more waste, but it's not being mismanaged. It's not going in the ocean. And I was in uh, Ottawa recently and they were talking about the usual things, right? Talk about straws, talk about bottles, and they talk about um, bags. And they did a, a, so they're always measuring what's in the ocean, what's really there. They go and grab these materials with a net and they found 6,048 objects. Of, of those, zero were bags, one was a straw and a couple of bottles. So the total of these consumer items in what was actually in the ocean was 0.03%. And 85% of it was fishing nets and gear. So this is another example, right? They're telling us worry about bags, ban straws, worry about bottles. None of these make a difference. The ratio of nets to these consumer products that I just mentioned was 2,800 to one. So we're talking about the one 
And no one's talking about the 2,800. They literally flew thousands of people to Ottawa to sit down and talk about this emergency about bags and straws and bottles in the ocean. And there is no emergency, according to the scientific data. The amounts are incredibly low and they've been constant for years. So that's what I that's why I see is um, the way that things are going. People hopefully will start looking at the science because the science is done. We know we know the problems and we know the solutions. And at the moment, people are uh, proposing things that just uh, make things worse. And Dr. Chris, what do you believe is the reason behind this significant rise in the negativity surrounding plastics, as we are all aware of? People are becoming rich. If you look at the donations, if in fact, if you look at the book by Dr. Patrick Moore, right, he was the president of Greenpeace, and he says they just tell lies for donations. That's their business model, according to him. He's written two books and a report on it, and he said the other green groups are doing the same. So we think that these people are good, but they're telling us things which are just not true right next to a shiny donate now button. If you uh, look at the World Wildlife Fund, they told us that we eat a credit card of plastic per week. If you look at the latest scientific study, it says they're completely wrong and it would take 20,000 years to eat five grams of plastic, right? So this is how big the whoppers they're telling us are. They're telling us things which are just scientifically disproven again and again and again. If you look at the Ellen MacArthur Foundation, they tell us there'll be more fish in the sea by 2050. That's been disproven by the BBC, by the CBC. It's disproven on my website. The scientists that they quoted said that they're wrong. Everybody says they're wrong. And as far as I know, they've never retracted that statement. They've never updated it with the truth. They still go around, as far as I know, saying there'll be more plastic than fish. We have an emergency. Give me all your money and let's take action. But they're taking action proven to increase harm because they're starting off with fiction. So that's where it's coming from. It's being driven by people who are greedy for our donations. And Dr. Chris, you have been a vocal advocate for the benefits of plastics. How do you plan to continue this advocacy in the face of increasing environmental scrutiny? And what strategies do you suggest for the industry to address these challenges? Well, first of all, I'd like to say I'm not actually a plastics advocate. I'm an advocate for truth, right? Because I'm a real scientist. Real scientists don't, uh, they're not, um, I don't have a political party. I'm not for Democrats or Republicans. I don't have a religion. I'm not fighting for any cause other than truth. So let's start with things which have evidence. If there are 30 studies on bags and they all say plastic bags are greenest and they're independent studies, then we should go with plastic bags. Banning or taxing the greenest solution is just stupid. And so... That's basically it. I'm, I, I try to avoid in my book, if you read it, I don't talk about the benefits of plastic. I try to not to do it ever on the podcast as well, because I think it's cheesy. It's a sellout. It's what people do who don't have good arguments. The arguments for plastic are that they're the cheapest, greenest thing that we have. Everything has impact, but they're the least impactful. And so the way I'll continue, um, as you know, I work alone, unfunded. It's just me on the couch. This is not my job. This is me in my spare time before work starts. Um, and so I'll just continue what I'm doing. And I'm hoping that some of the um, some of the plastics industry companies wake up, and instead of instead of having meetings with the World Wildlife Fund and the Ellen MacArthur Foundation and these other these other organisations that say things that just don't add up, instead of having meetings with them and collaborating with them, they should expose them. They should show the truth. They should say these people are not credible and start doing what's right and start putting their money with organisations that actually. Um, fight back against this misinformation. Because at the moment, the plastics industry organizations, many of the main ones have done a terrible job. They've done little to nothing. They've got the money, they've got the marketing budget to do something, but they don't have the expertise and they've just spent the money for years without really having any effective pushback. And we need a lot of it because imagine these people are getting hundreds of millions, right? They have professional marketing teams, these fake, these fake environmental groups. Um, so if you're going to fight back against professional marketing groups with huge amounts of money, you're going to need to really put in some effort. And uh, so far, I haven't seen that. Indeed, that's a spot on. But Dr. Chris, uh, do you think the global implementation of plastic bans is an effective solution for managing plastic waste? Uh, well, as you know, they just studied in the ocean. There were zero bags of what they found. Um, so if, if you've ever seen a picture of a turtle with a bag around its net, that's Photoshop. There's never been a picture like that in the real world ever. Um, and if you look at what happened, New Jersey banned plastic bags in America. And then they looked to see what happened after this ban. And they found out that the effect of the ban was to sell far more plastics after the ban. And, and they said it was a, what did they call it? An exponential increase in uh, greenhouse gas. Um, because because of the bag ban. And this is what 30 studies said would happen. Because if you ban these incredibly thin 
plastic bags for groceries, then you end up using much thicker bags. You have to go to the store and buy a much thicker trash, trash bag. It's four or, times, four or five times thicker than a regular bag you were using as a trash bag before, right? Your grocery bag, people reuse those as trash bags. Now you have to go and buy a much thicker bag and you end up selling more plastic, spending more money and increasing harm to the environment, just like 30 studies said would happen. And why aren't people doing it? If you go on your computer right now and type in LCA, that's for life cycle analysis, BAG, right? Type it into Google and you will find PDFs of peer-reviewed life cycle studies saying that plastic bags are the greenest option from Clemson, from Sweden, from Finland, from Denmark, from Norway, from France, all over the world, Australia, everyone agrees they're the greenest solution. So banning them, and you know why we are banning them? Because green groups are lying to us and because people want to feel good about themselves. So they did a study and they compared what do people think we can do to help the environment? And they think banning bags is the number one thing. Banning bags makes no difference. It makes things worse. The things you can do to actually help the environment are fly less, drive less, and eat less meat. But nobody wants to do those things. So instead, they walk around waving their cotton bagger over their head and saying, look what a great person I am. Everyone wants to feel like they're a good person, but they're not good people. They're increasing harm. They're spending more money to do it. And they're avoiding doing the things that could actually make a difference, which is driving, flying and eating less meat. So that's what that's another reason why it's so easy to get into this anti-plastics thing, because people want to believe it. They want to go along with it and they don't want to make the sacrifices needed to really help the environment. Well, Dr. Chris, this was one of the most insightful conversation I have ever had with anyone. So Thank you. Thank you so I much. I read 4,000 studies. I read 4,000 scientific studies unpaid to find the facts and then share them for free. So, uh, and everything I say, you can go on the website, you can look in the book, you can read the science word for word, copied and pasted, and then, then with a link to go and check it yourself. So everything's true and you can check it. Dr. Chris, thank you so much for sharing your valuable insights with us today. Your expertise and balanced perspective on the challenges and innovations in the plastics industry have been incredibly enlightening. Thank you for your time and for contributing to this important discussion. Thank you. Thank you so much. And that wraps up our enlightening conversation with Dr. Chris Diamond. We hope you enjoyed learning about the groundbreaking advancements and thought-provoking perspectives he shared with us today. Thank you for tuning in to Palmer Update. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to our channel for more such insightful interviews and videos. This is Sejal Hode and you are watching Palmer Update.